Hi, Serge and Sharon, and you know, thank you so much for taking the time to sit down with me to do this interview. Uh, as you guys uh, probably already know, my business, Be Who You Want to Be International, uh, focuses on empowering kids to be who they are uh, so they can express their true purpose. It's, it's really something that inspires me. Um, and your business, The Inspired Family, or your vision, I guess, um, really caught my eye because of the strong, uh, I guess, collaborative partnerships that you've developed with one another within your family dynamic. Um, and this is something that's really important, uh, and it, like uh, I've mentioned to people in the past, it's a really important element of my company. And after exploring more of what you guys are doing together, I really wanted to be able to share all your insights and wisdom about how you've been able to achieve this within your own family um, so I can uh, share it with everyone in the Be Who You Want to Be community. So thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks for having us. This is a, a great opportunity to share some wisdom. So thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're cool. Good on it. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. <laughs> so to get us started, um, are you able to give us a little bit of a, an idea of your backgrounds and I guess how you came to create this concept or this vision uh, or this mission, I guess, of the Inspired Family. Yeah, sure. Do you want to start or do you want me to go? You go. <laughs> okay, well, we were, I suppose, without sort of generalising too much, where we are a typical couple. Um, we grew up uh, in work class or working class families um, there weren't any um, silver spoons or mentors growing up or any true references of what the, I suppose, what the ideal family was like. We, we, we walked every day and experienced what we experienced thinking that, well, that's just the way it is, that, that's just normal living. Mm -hmm. um, we... Schooling-wise, we, we're not formally educated in, in, in any way. Like, we didn't go to university. We're pretty much we're, – we're dropouts. We're, <laughs> we, um, we successfully completed Year 10. Wow. <laughs> and then yeah. I, was made to, I was made to do another three years because maybe they just didn't want to, you know, upset the averages or something because I went to a private school. So right. they made me go through, but I basically become an example of what not to do. Right. In mm. my school. We rebelled, I suppose, yeah. both of us, actually. Yeah. yeah. I left school the moment I could, basically, and just ran into jobs. Yeah. yeah. So mm. from there, we... we um, uh, Gained our independence, I yeah. suppose, through yeah, we income, into, through yeah. money. So working for our titles, I suppose. Yeah. Like we, corporate ladders and different jobs and... Yeah, yeah. we started work... Uh, well, I mean... Uh, I, I took I took a year or so off and um, uh, and sort of did well, I suppose I didn't really do much other than you know I started on the doll mm -hmm. you know, was, again there was no university um, mm -hmm. and then from there I, I got into sales uh, and was in sales for twenty years. So um, we basically traded our time for money, right. but that's what we were in, indoctrinated I suppose conditioned to do. It was all about be grateful you've got a job. Mm -hmm. Get a job that's going to give you, you know, opportunities if you need to work somewhere else or if you yeah. get retrenched. Uh -huh. So, it was, yeah, it was just a normal way of living for us. But mm -hmm. we worked hard. Like, yeah, we, we were worked busy, hard. Yeah. very busy in our lives, yeah. very social, mm -hmm. you know, did all the normal things like buy a house, the cars, go on the job. So, for us, that was just normal, wasn't it? It was just, we were in that system, I suppose, that that way of life. Yeah, yeah, we were just... And we were fine. Yeah, we were fine. We were just one of the masses just going along, Greg, you know, <laughs> not doing anything, not breaking any records or doing anything differently and other you know. than, other than I suppose, we did well at, we, we did well at what we, at, at what we were, um, I suppose, in our careers. I mean, I, I got yeah. to a level where I'd become uh, a high money earner. Sharon was climbing the corporate ladder as well, like... Mm -hmm. We, um, we had attributes and skills that our um, employers could see. Um, but that was our life. There was no balance. Right. Yeah, and that, and that was pretty much it. So from a working, uh, yeah, from that, that sort of background. Focus. And I can, what I can say is we were very good employees, so we were dedicated, like great, mm. what's the word? Yeah, Not pleasers. Simple. Pleasers. We were, pleasers. We were very good, good at soldiers. Doing that. Soldiers. <laughs> so great for working for somebody else yeah. and living our lives, you know, according to other people's values and 
but we mm-hmm. didn't really have any of our own. So that's, we, you know, we subordinated. We did really well with that. Yeah, we did well. So that was pretty much our career background. And then it got to a point where um, oh, oh. yeah, it just got to a point, especially with me, that, that there was just a knowing that there was something a little bit beyond what it is that I was doing every day. And, and Sharon was experiencing that a little bit as well. But we sort of questioned it to a small degree, but we never really jumped into the deep end and explored what the opportunities were for us. We, we basically towed the party line mm-hmm. as, as, as far as my um, uh, uh, understanding was of, of in order to be um, or play the game and be a good citizen, then there's a, a, a certain line that you need to take or a certain path and, you know, again, school, Job, retire, pension, School and then job, family. Yeah, retire, pension. Right. Yeah, that's so, typical. So that's pretty yeah. much our background. There was nothing special there, yeah. Greg. Um, we we basically towed the party line. So we were good. We were good, honest, working people, as you know, if you can say that. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much that's yeah. pretty much it. Okay. And how did you uh, come to create the inspired family? This vision that you guys have come up with. Okay. So that was something that just happened. Are you talking about the conception of Jasmine or? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that can be part of it, sure. <laughs> well, Jasmine was, well, no, it was actually health was a, a first, I suppose, massive area of change. Yeah. I became a little bit unwell and then I started to, I suppose, delve and ask some questions. Um and I, I think the catalyst for me, I remember one day walking out into the street and going, well, if I, you know, if I keep doing, I just stood out in the street. It was very weird. I, I stood there and went, if I keep doing what everyone else in the street is doing with their health, I'm going to get what they get. And I think that was a real eye-opener for me. I thought there's no one in the street that I would really go, wow, they're really healthy or it just no one stood out. There was no example of health. Uh-huh. And then I realised, well, if I keep doing what everyone else is doing, mm-hmm. I'm going to get exactly what everyone else gets. Right. So uh-huh. I went, well, what do I need to do? And so for me it was, actually, I need to do the opposite. What's the opposite? So it was mm-hmm. asking a question mm-hmm. and then I started slowly without really being conscious about it. I didn't realise how much time I was investing in researching health. And I think when you really study something, you really see it for what it is. And I became quite, um, yeah, it became like not an obsession, but it, I, it was fascinating for me because I was experiencing ill health mm-hmm. um, at quite a young age, like at 35 or 34, mm-hmm. and I thought this is not good. So it was that, and I found that putting, uh, when you stop putting certain foods into your body, you're able to, your body just becomes cleaner and you'll be, you're be you able to think clearer, mm-hmm. cleaner, you see things, it's like a fog lifts. Mm-hmm. And so for me that was like an indication of, wow, this is where the path mm-hmm. I'm on mm-hmm. is amazing. Like what else is there? Mm-hmm. And then I think we, um, Jazzy well, came along yeah, 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 as that, well. Yeah, obviously Jazzy came along. And that was So we became the massive. family then. Right. Yeah. And Which I think, cool. yeah, having a child, I mean, it depends. I was a lot more clear in my thoughts, so I was much more open to possibilities. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, I asked the same question again, like with the parenting, because I looked around and when, when I was pregnant and went, oh, I, I, it kind of affected me how I see a lot of parents, you know, um, relate to their children. And I found that actually started to affect me. Like I, I didn't feel right. Mm-hmm. So I asked the same question. If I keep doing what these people were doing, then I'm going to get exactly that. Right. So mm-hmm. then I thought, what's the opposite? Because mm-hmm. I thought, wow, it works for health. And we were starting to receive, you know, some extraordinary mm-hmm. results with health. So I started delving into parenting, which was massive again, and I saw another world, mm-hmm. an amazing connective mm-hmm connective, empathetic, compassionate world, Mm. something I had never ever experienced Mm. before, Mm -hmm. even within myself Mm -hmm. or even, I suppose, with our relationship. And Mm. so when Jazzy came on board, it was like this big unlocked chest opened up and I was able to connect with that, with her and all the 
information, the research that I had read, and it just intuitively felt right. Mm. But what I didn't realise was what it brings up and how mm. it, it brought us together as well. Mm. Like you can't just right. do it on one area of your life or with one person mm. in a family. It, it kind of overflows. Mm-hmm. Mm. Isn't it? So yeah. that was massive. And then what else? Oh, it was health. It was jazzy. And uh, at, at, at the time I became I became retrenched, it was at the start of the GFC. Um, so that that really pushed some 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 buttons for me because there goes there goes that security blanket. There goes the income. Right. Nothing else really stopped. I mean, your income stops coming in. But nothing else, like the bills keep coming, mm. and you know there's still commitments and things that you need to to um, to meet. So um, for me, it was then okay. Well, we're now a family unit, wife, daughter. Um, there's commitments there. I've got my own needs that I need to meet as well. But in saying that, and seeing the transition that um, Sharon made, uh, and I suppose. In the start, she was more the pioneer. So the health, obviously, Jazzy come along. Um, I was tested with the um, with with not having um, a job. Mm-hmm. And can I just say something? I actually was I was celebrating. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, this is fantastic. Yeah. You know? Sharon actually, yeah, Sharon actually, when I come home and said, listen, it's over because I was about twelve months away from pulling the pin and going and taking a different course because I was in the same industry for nearly 20 years and I achieved what I could. So anyway, I wasn't growing. I was sort of plateauing. Um, I come home and I said that and Sharon said, wow, what a fantastic opportunity. Now I can just, you know, get my teeth into all the things that I wanted to learn about (laughs) about health and about parenting and and all these things that she's got all this data that she hasn't had a chance to get her teeth into, you know, and I'm the opposite. Um, So she was like, wow, this is great. How awesome. So... I suppose in saying that, having having Sharon, uh, having the support of 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 my wife at that particular time, seeing her being excited, so she gave it a completely different meaning. Mm-hmm. A different meaning. Um, most people in that in in uh, that I was working with were sort of talking doom and gloom. Oh my God, what are we going to do? You know, the world's going to end, blah, blah. I come home and Sharon's a complete opposite. She gets excited. She's <laughs> focusing on a vision, what it is that she can do now. Now mm-hmm. you're at home. We can do more things. We can work personally. We can grow. This And, Inside. and it just, for me, something clicked and it was like, oh, wow, okay. So we lost attachments to everything. So we didn't own, um, I, I become sort of, you know, not I wouldn't say obsessed, but we're all, we all like to own things, and toys, I, yeah, and toys, and just we get so attached to material things. And I understand that that's a driver, material. But I was more going towards the spiritual sense. So I was getting to, I wanted to really know myself. So for me, it was an opportunity to let go of everything, not own any of it. If um, if someone was to knock on the door and take it all away, they can have it. We're starting with a completely blank canvas, uh-huh. and. It was at the time there when we said, "Wow, wow, we're we're off now. We're we're going to pick up the paintbrush. We're going to paint whatever it is that we want on the canvas. We can use whatever colours we want, and we're not going to subordinate to anybody or anything anymore." Wow. So for us, that was um, that's how the inspired family came about. Is as a unit, we were both congruent. Over we, time, though, it's t- it took a while. Like it didn't happen that 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 split second, right. but. Those three, those three things alone just built the foundation for us to have the courage to go and follow our dreams and what it is that we wanted to do. And ask questions. I think yeah. parenting is just so, it was so huge for me because we approached parenting with Jazzy not as her parents. Mm-hmm. In a very different aspect, treating her like not, not an individual or such, like an adult, but as her own being. Mm-hmm. We're not really here to dem- you know, to really show, like to really teach her anything. Right. You know, we're yeah. here to exemplify. So it was really, I I did a lot of reading on different modalities of parenting, like aware parenting, attachment parenting. But you know, the aware parenting side for me was it's about being aware. 
uh-huh. and you can't be aware unless you're present. And right. so uh-huh. it was, yeah, it was yeah. a lot of time to sit in and reflect. All your frustrations come up, and then we share them. Yeah. And yeah, yeah, that's how we grew. Yeah. Cool. So that's probably the key three things. I mean, there's many others, and we can go on talking about this for a while. For sure, we could. Yeah, <laughs> they're probably the key three things. Mm. Yeah. Cool. That's awesome. Well, you, you kind of answered my my next question, which is kind of what constitutes what what I guess constitutes an inspired family. So you've kind of answered that, which is great. So I'm going to ask my next question after this. Is I guess what I want to know is how is it possible for people, and just from your own experiences and your own family, how is it possible for people who have different values, ideals, and beliefs um, in a family dynamic? How 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 do you get that all to work together? Because I know you guys have obviously found a way to do that with each other. Um, so how do you do that? What's what's the secret? Okay. Oh. I wouldn't say it's a secret. Oh. <laughs> For me, I think, and you'd probably understand this a lot, I, knowing, identifying your highest values mm-hmm. first, but then all of you doing that, and then from that you get to know what your needs are because we're all so different. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like we are three individuals, so we've got completely different values or in different order, mm-hmm. and the needs are in different order. Yeah. I would say that, and then having – creating a way to actually meet those needs. Mm -hmm. There's no use actually identifying them and knowing them if you actually don't actually find a way to actually meet them. Of course. I think that's really quite important. Um, And valuing our differences as well. Like I found from finding out what our highest values are, I actually value Serge's you value, you know, I value what he values. And so she should, Greg. It wasn't like that. It was like, oh, you know, why just... Can't he see or what's he thinking? Whereas now I can really appreciate where he's coming from and value that right. and realise he's actually got um, – con- he can contribute as well. Mm. He's got great value to add as well. Of course. So mm. I find that those three or four main areas, I think you really have to know yourself first, know what's highest on yeah. your values, yeah. your needs are from that yeah. and then finding a way to meet those needs as well within a family dynamic. So yeah. with Jazzy, we don't, and like we said, we have a weekly meeting. Well, we plan goals, but we have a weekly meeting as well. So we make yeah. sure that we do meet those needs. Fantastic. Yeah, so the avenue's open, but if I can just just briefly touch upon what, what, what Sharon um, sure. just said, and, and the foundation for us was really getting to know who it is that we were. Mm-hmm. Now, it sort of flows on a little bit from from the the first question, and, and that is when we become um, less busy. So we actually had a choice. Mm-hmm. So we chose not to be busy. We chose not to go back to work. Right. That was the first thing. And the reason why we did that is because we had an understanding that in order to get to know who we were, we needed to be quieter and we needed to be still right so we didn't need any external noises or influences or anything like that not that we went and hid in a cave but we we just got to know ourselves better Mm, and in so doing it has an effect where sharon i was aware of what sharon's needs were she was aware again of what my needs were um so there was that understanding so the cards were on the table there was no smoke or mirrors or anything like that Mm -hmm. so we actually shared what it is Hmm. That, that that was highest or what was important to us. We actually got hmm. to know that and we opened up the avenues and the channels in order to discuss it. Because mm-hmm. it's one thing to know yourself, okay, and it's another thing to then have another person understand where it is that you're coming from and then valuing what it is that, what hmm. you know, so what's important to, to Sharon is, it might not be necessarily what's important to me, but I still value that highly. Right. So, again, it's meeting everyone's needs as well. Right. And the time to meet the needs. And having the time and not being so busy or so stressed or whatever. I mean, that's again, that's something different. I mean, that's that's an issue in itself, uh-huh. busyness and, and all that. Mm. But, um, but yeah, I, I, I suppose that's pretty much it. Mm. It's, it's really getting to know ourselves, um, opening up the channels and being aware. Mm. And, we, and we can say this because we've come from really busy right. where we uh-huh. – Busy. Yeah. I was the queen of busy. I busied our lives up so well mm. prior to our change, and yet now our lives are completely different. Mm-hmm. We don't do that. Mm-hmm. So I can, 
Like I've sat in both worlds. Yeah, we have, yeah. Like we haven't just come from a quiet lifestyle and then gone into a more conscious lifestyle. We've come from a really busy, Heavy unconscious, yeah. six days a week, lifestyle. Six days a week for 20-odd years of work. Yeah, I like, couldn't. We couldn't yeah. not be busy because then we would have to address our emotions. Of like, course. You know, yeah. Whereas that wasn't an option back then where, yeah. see, now it's very different. Yeah. Great. So, yeah. That's pretty cool. Well, uh, thank you for sharing that. That's... Uh, I can I can certainly relate to what you're saying, um, just in relation to my own my own wife and our relationship with each other, and mm -hmm. uh, just with some of the other relationships that I've seen who um, have gone through I guess a conscious change uh, to grow within themselves. It's it's uh, when you support each other's values um, and work with with each other rather than against each other because we're just so different, we're so independent, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, it it actually creates a much more integrated um, dynamic. So thank you for for reflecting that and, and sharing that. It's it's definitely something I can see in my own life. Mm -hmm.